Good morning. Let's start this morning with prayer. Father, we are thankful for this day. This Friday, Lord, thank you, Lord. The last Friday. No, uh, 24th. The one, two, three, fourth Friday of May. <laughs> Next one coming up. Uh, thank you, Lord, as we take up our cross daily. Uh, as Jesus already spoke about the cross today, that will be a reminder and for us to spend this weekend meditating on this word, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Take up your cross daily. Hallelujah. Take it up. Pastor Pong, in Christian context, elucidates or uh, explains or clarifies the essence of discipleship according to the teaching of Jesus is to place divine love above all worldly attachment, including familiar bonds. This radical call for prioritized spiritual devotion over earthly tie is exemplified by Abraham's willingness to sacrifice Isaac, which signifies ultimate faith and obedience to God. Similarly, the act of taking up one's cross represents a journey of self-denial and the readiness to face suffering for the sake of following Jesus. This path promised eternal life spiritual fulfillment over worldly pleasure and gains. I think Pastor Bong really had to grapple with this issue, losing all of the loved ones, especially son, who went out and most likely was killed by the, the political police who was patrolling and was catching any demonstrators. Dictator Park wanted to become the president forever and ever before he was assassinated. Um, and so he had a strong man approach uh, and a lot of, of course, young people, college students were demonstrating. And, uh, he disappeared one day and uh, so sad that he, all his life, he never closed his door. He always left his door open just in case his son will come back home. Then he's, he lost his daughter who takes our life and and I mean it's tragic after tragic you know and I shared this when I was teaching book of Job so when he writes a commentary he basically immediately brings the cross to offering of Abraham of Isaac wow hmm. and Jesus was he was sending out the disciples it talks about that. Well, I did not even read. <laughs> Let me read the text first. Sorry. Uh, I'm getting really excited about this text. 10, 37, 39. This is King James. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not the cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. He that loses his life may, for my sake, shall find it. King James. What about NIV? Anyone who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Hmm. So in Matthew 10, 37, Jesus speaks of the cost of discipleship, demanding love for him above all family ties, reflecting on Abraham's test on faith in Genesis 22, 2. How do you understand the balance between loving your family and prioritizing your love for God? And there are there areas in your life where is your struggle to maintain this balance? Especially if you are a new father and have several little kids that is so loving, so cute, you know, wait for you when you're coming back from work, jumps on you, wants to play with you. That's so cute. And for God to say that unless you love me more than your children, Unless, because I, I think 
especially when you are married and have your own kids. It's like, can you love your children more than your parents? Oh, yeah, I'm already doing that. <laughs> That'd be too easy. Um, but he considers, Jesus says that, and then he says, well, oh, let's take up your cross. He's already foreshadowing that he too loves his father, God. He loves his God. It's kind of weird kind of com combination relationship, isn't it? He being the man. Now, father God, the creator, is God to him, although he himself is God. Prioritize. And so that was his cross. You know, take this cross away from me, this cup away from me, but if it's thy will, let it be done. In this profound confession of love, he demonstrates this, right? Uh, wow. Prioritizing love, loving Jesus above all else, emphasizing this verse, even though it may sound as if one is being told not to love their family, the intention is to prioritize the love of God first. It's called the principle of exaggeration. Just like that in Cambodia, remember, uh, in, Kampong, in Kokong, and Buddhist monks carry the Bible and says, well, the Bible says this. In Matthew, it says to love your mom and dad or love God more. But actually, in Luke, it says, unless you hate your mom and dad. It's, it's a different way of looking at it. It's the principle of exaggeration. So... The principle is that, do you really love God so much that if God tells you to now take your son and kill him and offer as a living, as a, as a, a burnt offering, are you, can you, in your mind, willing to do that? Not actually <laughs> physically do it, then we'll become criminal. Um, and that's the point here. See, likewise, taking up one's cross to follow Jesus means embracing the path of self-denial Self-sacrifice, even when it involves bearing shame and suffering. Jesus carried his cross, and those who followed him are called to do the same. This I'm reading off of Pastor Bong's commentary. Um, the other commentary is Benson. I, you know, I was reading Benson. It, it's kind of, kind of benign, not really pointed. Does not really bring the cross with Abraham, but he's just talking about. The, the Romans tradition of how carry the cross. And so there are still more kind of describing what that means, but does not really talk about, well, why don't you prescribe that the cross that he bare was Abraham's Isaac. What is your cross today? Hmm? What is your cross? Jesus promises Matthew 10, 39, that whoever loses his life for his, his sake will find it. Reflect on this, on times when you have had to lose something valuable to follow Christ more closely. How did this sacrifice lead to finding greater life in Christ? You know, I was reminded of my Nuna. Her name is Joanne. She was a missionary to Bolivia. And at the time I met, she was doing her PhD at GTU, Berkeley. And she was telling, just nonchalantly, you know, I, I, I once was engaged to a man and we're going about to get married. And during the process, during the time, God calls her to be a missionary to Bolivia. So she told her fiance that, oh, honey, God called me to be a missionary to Bolivia. Would you come with me? And he said, no, I don't want to be a missionary to Bolivia. So she said goodbye and became a missionary to Bolivia. To her, following God, loving God, what, lo doing what God says is way, way, way more important than marrying anybody because she was first married to Christ. Wow. Do you have that kind of relationship? You know, um, I was just uh, sent by uh, Bopar, some of the ministry they do. You know, Bopar was a married woman uh, start collecting, or she had no intention of starting an orphanage, but 
she, she was orphan herself. And so she would go out and then bring one or two kids from the Phnom Penh. The war got around. Now she has to take care of 82 orphans. Some of them just have parents, but they just dumped them in their center, center of peace. So her first husband just ran. He was like, I don't want to live with 82 kids. We don't even have our own. And she doesn't. She adopted two kids. And, and so she now married to an American missionary from Seattle and continuing their ministry. So point is that, yeah, there are times that you just got to let go of stuff that you, you really, really love to do. And um, over and over again, when you take up your cross, die to yourself that you no longer live, but it is Christ who lives in you. Hallelujah. So Father, make it so. I just pr pray that your spirit, Father, will guide and minister and just move. That we'll give up on the things we we'll be. Who's our Isaac, Lord, that we worship, that we cannot let go? Father, let that be the today, Lord, that we say, yes, Lord, and we are willing in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord bless you guys. See you tomorrow. Mwah.